Maybe we'll start off by giving a little introduction about ourselves. Um, I'll go first. Um, I'm Ishita Savant. I'm the founder and CEO of Meola.com. Uh, Meola is a new age marketplace. Uh, we host over 700 brands on the platform today that resonate with a Gen Z or young millennial. So a lot of the brands that we saw on the panel today would be on my hit list uh, post this uh, talk, um, but essentially we're an 11 month old company. Um, I started Meola straight out of college, um, actually was working on technology while I was at college, um, graduated in December, came back to India in January, um, raised a round of pre-seed funding from some great angel investors and an early stage fund, and yeah, got to building. Um, we started actively monetizing our platform last month, and uh, things are going well, but um, yeah, that that's, that's pretty much about the time me. Counter, yeah. That's great, Ishida. Uh, hi, this is Jugal. I'm a founder of Bombay Trooper. Uh, Bombay Trooper is a, a fashion and accessories brand uh, founded about a decade ago, back when uh, D2C wasn't even a term, you know, we just... Uh, were building e-commerce stores and, you know, hoping something would work out. And it was quite an adventurous time back then. The challenges we faced, you know, in those days were very different from the challenges we face today. You know, it, it was difficult to convince customers to shop online compared to right now where, you, you know, everyone's just fighting for the same Instagram spot. So we, we come from a lot of... Uh, uh, we had a lot of opportunities to innovate, you know, starting in 2012 as an apparel brand. And uh, I think since then, we've just, just kept on uh, in, in, inventing new ways to sell, new in, inventing new products to sell. And uh, yeah, since then, it's been a pretty solid journey. I actually had a presentation. I don't know if... Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so maybe I'll hey, backtrack to January uh, when we were setting Miola up first. For context, Sorry? I have studied business while at college. I studied at Northeastern University in Boston. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, but I took a little different turn to my education, right? I spent more time outside of Boston and outside of college than I did in college. I spent time in four different countries. Um, that really meant living and breathing in four different consumer economies for up to six months, right? You're discovering local local grocery stores, you're thinking about, um, you know, where to go to eat, which is going to be your uh, convenience store that you visit. You're also meeting other students from across the country, across different countries. Um, the theme of sustainability was so prevalent uh, abroad, right? Every time we walked into a Sephora, uh, people asked, which is the vegan cruelty-free range? Or when we went into a grocery store, we only wanted to buy, uh, you know, the cruelty-free um, options or the organic options. So coming stage. back to India, I didn't really think it would be the case here, right? There are huge trade-offs between needs and wants in the country. No, uh, the the level track, of disposable no, so income in the country is also very different. Um, we were pleasantly surprised. Uh, we created a database of over 4,000 brands in the country that were focused on sustainability as a concept, um, which also included legacy players such as an HUL or a Puma that were launching new collections. <laughs> Um, I, uh, when I was yeah. starting off, didn't really think of raising a round of funding no, as no, early I'm as we did. Yes. Um, I joke about it now, but I'm really glad that LinkedIn didn't block me because that's the number of cold so messages question. that I, I must have sent out in the first three months. Um, <laughs> but I was lucky so enough to have those cold messages I, converted uh, and two very large consumer-focused fund founders um, ended up investing in Miola, that was Nikhil Vora of Six Sense Ventures and Sachin Bharte of Lighthouse. I think the last uh, 11 months have been a journey. We've had like at least four vividly different uh, experiences. First, it was figuring out technology partners. I had to learn their lingo to be able to work with them. Uh, then, of course, putting a team together. Um, most of my team had far, far more experience than I did and uh, probably knew their job much better than I did. Um, so always focused on hiring subject matter experts. And now we're in the whole uh, zero to one journey where we're ramping up the platform. Uh, the trade-offs between uh, performance marketing and brand marketing is always on the cards. Um, you know, just now we 
uh, heard on the panel that, uh, you know, performance marketing, uh, you can never win in it. So I always call performance marketing like a casino. Uh, you know, you can never win. The casino always wins. So we're parallel tracking with a lot of brand marketing. Uh, we're a team of about 20 people now. Uh, seems surreal when I think of it that at this same point uh, last year I was actually a university student uh, wrapping up my studies. Uh, but that's essentially about Meola. We hope to Meola, uh, make Meola the go-to destination for new gen consumers to basically pick anything for their lifestyle, right? Whether it's fashion, including footwear, apparel, accessories, whether it is beauty and personal care items, home cleaning products, the more tactile categories, and of course, baby products. Um, I think my biggest takeaway would be to create a personal board of advisors very early on, and that's when a lot of those LinkedIn messages uh, helped, because today um, I feel like why we've been able to accelerate our growth, whether it's in terms of technology development, we had the CTO of Swiggy on our cap table, whether it's in terms of onboarding new brands, we had the founder of a large, uh, you know, uh, uh, consumer-focused fund on our cap table. So we were able to look at it uh, from different perspectives. Um, but in addition to your company's board of directors, create your own board of advisors, and people can really, um, you know, expedite your growth journey. Check. Okay, this works. That's great, Ishita. I, I, I just hope we had something like Meola back when Bombay Trooper started out. So, uh, okay, so about Bombay Trooper, right? I just, I just wanna share a little story about uh, how we tackled some of the challenges that I mentioned, right? Like we, we come from those um, early days where things were so different. Uh, le le let me just set a perspective here. Right? I, I founded Bobby Trooper t 10 years ago. And uh, at that point, uh, like I said, the l landscape was pretty different. You know, we didn't have, um, we, we, we didn't have ready marketing tools. Uh, there was no UPI. The payment gateways looked very different than what they do today. Um, shipping companies didn't have that, you know, easy one-click return button it was, uh, in, in fact, return is something that uh, was the biggest evil. Uh, I still remember you have, when a customer had to return a shipment of ours, they had to print a shipping label, but then, you know, they didn't have a printer at home, so they would go to the shop, <laughs> print the shipping label, and put it on the envelope. But by this time, they have lost the envelope, so I have to ship a new envelope for, to them to, you know, just for them to be able to send this return back. And uh, this was actually one of the most uh, interesting problem I wanted to solve, that, you know, how do you solve returns? Uh, we, uh, we, we have always been an innovative company, just to give an overview of the products we made. Uh, we have always had uh, innovation and sustainability at the heart of everything we do. Uh, so over here you'll see uh, these are the flannel shirts we made from uh, recycled pet bottles. Uh, the one shirt over here is actually converted from seven pet bottles taken from ocean fills and landfills. Uh, then we have uh, these backpacks that are upcycled from discarded military tents. Uh, you know, those tough and rugged tents that army uses after they uh, are out of service. We use that same fabric and uh, convert them into these backpacks that last you a lifetime. And uh, yeah, and then we came up with these uh, idea for uh, pants, we call them hoppers. Uh, they are like, uh, you know, super cozy, comfortable, uh, different looking pants that, and this is exactly what I want to talk about today, you know, like every brand has that, uh, aha moment and uh, these hoppers were actually our aha moment when you know i was trying to figure out how how to solve the return issue when in industry average returns was like 25 to 30 percent for you know apparel based uh, e-commerce companies i thought what let, let's go back to the design lab what what can we do to you know change, uh, help these things. Sure, there are like fancy tools right now that use AI to predict uh, risky orders and you have got your fancy UI UX to 
teach customer how to order the right size. But I thought, you know what, what, what if we just completely change the approach? Let's not go to any of those things. Um, okay, hard to, for me to see the screen. Yeah, so in order to solve the returns issue, right, I thought, what if I made an apparel that had no size issues? Out of the 30% returns that most fashion brands had, like more than half of them were because of sizes. I thought, okay, let's, can we design an apparel that has no sizes? It's a crazy, crazy idea. It uh, was, uh, you know, we just went back to the drawing board, made a few prototypes. Uh, it was a wild experiment, and uh, somehow it worked. We, we created uh, the pants, the, those hoppers that you just saw, the ones that I'm wearing right now, right? We invented the pants that are unisex, one size fits all, and it's the same form that we use for you know every use case, be it casual wear or party wear. And thus we created uh, that we, what we call now hoppers. And um, you know, it took off it. People just, uh, uh, we sold out our first batch in five days. And uh, since then we have just, uh, made, uh, it, it provided us a framework to keep adding new colors, new fabrics, new styles uh, within the same product which was, you know, accepted by everyone and, you know, the, uh, the proof of concept was already a hit. And um, yeah, ever, ever since we launched that, uh, we had returns in single digit, uh, people were just, uh, repeat orders were great. Uh, it, it, gave us an opportunity to keep selling same product to people for multiple different occasions. And uh, since then we have, bought, we have made more than 150 hoppers, uh, you know, in different designs and styles and patterns and sold more than 15 crores worth of inventory. And I think this, this was quite fun just discovering this whole journey and, uh, you know, figuring out different challenges while trying to solve a completely different problem. So yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you guys about Bombay Trooper. Yeah, that's really interesting. I want to go to one point that you mentioned that, you know, a couple, many years ago, we didn't have a lot of ecosystem help to enable a lot of things from even a technology perspective. When you think about Mayola, it's a full stack, digital first e-commerce marketplace, right? Not easy to build for the seller, uh, your internal team, and then the consumer f at the same time, keeping in mind all the thoughts. But something that I was taught very early on from a, a, a tech mentor of mine was that just stand on the shoulders of giants. You know, there are large companies out there, a lot of which are actually, uh, you know, exhibiting today. Um, everything doesn't need to be built from scratch. So wherever it's not really your core business or it's not your moat, we've depended on the, uh, you know, the, the partners who know it best because they have the data, they've done the customer research um, and they probably know what they're doing, right? Um, so yeah, I think now, in back in the day, getting a marketplace up with 700 brands uh, five years ago, tough, but today not because of the way the ecosystem has evolved. So, um, you know, when I used to attend this these kind of events in the first three months of being an entrepreneur, I had a lot of expectations that, you know, I'll meet someone I know, they'll introduce me to someone, and uh, that's how the conversation will get started. But um, something I've learned after those first three months is have no expectations. When you walk into a room, it's just you and it's your business, and you've got to gate crash conversations, uh, and you don't know what comes out of which conversation. Uh, but yeah, I'd just like to leave you guys with that. Yeah, that's great. But Ishida, I just have one question for you. You said you started 11 months ago, and you have 700 uh, brands on your platform right now. How did you manage to enroll them in such a short time? Um, so it had its fair bit of uh, pitfalls. We also had a very, very stringent vetting process, right? Because we have all sustainable brands on the website, which means a lot of vetting of documentation, supply chain information, um, et cetera. Uh, but I honestly uh, looked at a model that I knew worked very well, right? Banks. Uh, their salespeople are unbeatable, right? Um, especially in the B2B vertical for like... Banks. banks, yeah, banks. Um, you know, when you have to open salary,
salary accounts and you like I noticed it because I had incorporated a company I had like 40 banks behind me to open a salary account with them um, so the head or lead onboarding uh, salesperson in our team came from that background and we actually set it up as though it was a banking uh, you know uh, acquisition customer acquisition flow um, and I think we perfected it in like two months um, so essentially a lot of times we have to look at other industries take the best practices and apply them here. Um, so yeah, that's why today we're over 700 brands. We have Neiman's on our website. We have M Caffeine. Uh, we also recently got an inbound from HUL. They wanted to onboard their brands onto Miola. Um, I think it was our ads that did the trick for them. Uh, but yeah, I think just drawing inspiration from who does it best. Okay, that's a good point you mentioned about ads. Now, say if Bombay Rupa joins Miola, how do you decide, will you spend ad, ad spend on my brand or some, uh, someone else's brand? So we have an interesting matrix, right? Um, when we had done our assortment planning early on, um, we had set like a 250 brands to go live kind of deadline. Um, and then we touched 650 by the time we had to go live. So we realized that we had to prioritize. So we created buckets of brands, right? Um, so we had a bucket called traffic makers. So these were essentially brands that were today bigger than us. They had a great keyword search volume. Uh, they were very well established, well funded, and essentially we could bank on their success to a certain extent. We had a second bu bucket called traffic takers. So this was a clear parallel to one traffic maker. So just to give you an example, a Neiman's, right? A Neiman's sneakers is clearly a traffic maker. Their brand is really large now. People actively Google search Neiman's. At the same time, we have a brand called Green Soul, great product. Um, great selling price, uh, good functionality, good A plus content on the website. Why can't Green Soul also be in the running on Meola? And that's what Meola really stands for, right? Today, global marketplaces like at Amazon, Flipkart, discovery is extremely broken, um, right? You have 50 pages of vitamin C serums. Who's going to get to the forget? fourth page of it, um, but they're all great products, uh, which is why with Miola, when we do our attribution setting, uh, we do it such that, you know, a Neiman's, a customer who comes in for Neiman's will also view Green Soul and other traffic takers, which are competitive in pricing, similar products, so that the customer has a choice and they can make a choice. Um, so yeah, that's essentially how we prioritized. Um, you know, initially, it's always been 30% large marquee names in an ad. So if I'm running an ad with five products, uh, you know, two of those products are going to be big names because that's going to catch someone's eye. And three products are going to be parallels, uh, great products, competitive pricing, so that the customer knows that if they come to Miola, they also can look for something unique. Um, but yeah, we have not gone through the 700 brands. On a monthly basis, we run ads at least on, on 200 of these 700 brands. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. Which, which bucket would Bombay Trooper fall in? I'm sorry, Bombay Trooper? Yeah. I'll have to do research on your keyword volume, but if you've been there for 10 years, I'm sure it's really good. And you've done 15 crore of sales on the ho hoppers. So yeah, I'm sure you'll be a traffic maker for us. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. We should definitely try that out. Yeah, that's it. Is okay. there anything else uh, you guys want to ask? Uh, 